Well, would you look at that. Something that the developers of Final Fantasy XIII told us was not possible. A proper town. The thing that was said a lot by the developers in the wake of the sort of, let's say, not favorable reception of Final Fantasy XIII was that there weren't enough towns, there, the dungeons, it was all just a big dungeon. And the developers said that in the HD era, you simply couldn't create a large world map with detailed dungeons and towns. It just there's too much stuff to create, too much, uh, too many assets. But look at this world we're in right now. And this is uh, two generations, two console generations removed from Final Fantasy XIII. So it's like, hey, you know what? They managed to do it here. Granted, this game has a psychotic budget, and not everybody can do it, but you know, it's still Square Enix. Excuse me, would you happen to be the landlady? Depends who's asking, and why they have an Imperial Bearer with them. For protection. Which hopefully won't be needed, if you can advise me on the safest route to the west. It's your friend here I'd be worried about. Bearers don't have an easy time of it in Rosaria. Even a strapping lad like him might attract the wrong kind of attention. And if he gets nabbed, it ain't likely to end well for you either. Then we'll just have to stay out of the militia's way. Gav said you might be able to help us. Follow me. Sorry for before. Can't be too wary of strangers asking questions in our game. I'm Martha, an old friend of Sid's. He said he had high hopes for a bearer who joined recently. I expect that's you. So, where is it you're headed? For Phoenix Gate. We have questions that need answering. Is that so? Well, if you want to avoid the garrison, the road through Eastpool's your best bet. Or it would be, if the bridge hadn't collapsed. A right bloomin' nuisance it is. We've had no trade with the village for weeks. I did ask our carpenter to take a look at it. But he went out on another job, and he hasn't come back. Do you think something might have happened to him? Fingers crossed he's just taking his time. The alternative don't bear thinking about. We'll find him. And make sure he's safe. We both need that bridge repaired. And your carpenter sounds like the man to do it. I see why Sid's got such a soft spot for you. If you could, I'd be in your debt. You said that he went out on a job? Right. He went down into the marshes to check on another bridge. The one by the Fallen Gate. The marshes were dangerous at the best of times. We should hurry. There's a ladder to the side of the gate. That's the quickest way down, if you've a head for heights. His name is Bernard. Should you find him well, tell him Martha sent you. And that he's wanted at the bridge to Eastpool. To the marshes, then. Let's find that ladder. An interesting little bit of world building we have here. Clive has the tattoo on his face, marking him as a bearer or a branded, which basically means that he is a slave. Now, most people, I would imagine, would have a difficult time enslaving somebody or treating them so poorly unless they were somehow convinced through society or some way of thinking about the enslaved people as being somehow inferior to them. Same way where, like, racism comes into play in the same way. You convince a person that this other people are in some way inferior to you, so it becomes easier to treat them poorly. 
Now, Clive having a tattoo on his face makes it basically impossible for him to interact with people without them seeing the tattoo and knowing what he is and reacting to him with their pre-established biases. So Clive has a hard time communicating with a lot of people in this world, and over the next episode or so, we're going to see Jill have to speak for him a lot. Because even though Jill isn't really any different than him, they're both dominants, they both have the magic powers, they both turn into the giant creatures, they are very different in terms of their appearance, whereas Clive has the tattoo, Jill does not. I guess that does go a little ways into pointing out how ridiculous the entire concept is, the whole racism aspect of this, and the whole slavery is... That the two of these characters are basically just not different at all, but people will react to one a certain way only because they know something about them. That doesn't really have anything to do with like who they are as a person, just more of what they are. Now, of course, you'll see there are incidents where there are characters that are dominants or characters. I imagine we're going to see it, too, that there are characters that are bearers who are legitimately shitty people. And perhaps the fact that they had all of this power jived with their personality to create a person who was really just power hungry or I would imagine it's let's let's put it a different way. You have all of these characters running around and a lot of them have powers. You would expect that you sort of have a world where the people with the powers somehow assert their dominance over everyone else, even if they are in a sort of minority. They're sort of an elite people because they have physical abilities that the other people can't match. This puts them in a unique position to sort of dominate the rest of the world. But we see it in this game, and we also see something similar in the Dragon Age series, where mages, or uh, bearers and dominance, are oftentimes just treated very poorly by the majority of people who have significantly lesser power. I guess since we've seen it in the Dragon Age series before this, it's not a particularly unique thing, but I, it is something worth pointing out. Thank you, my lady. You saved my life. Not at all. You're Bernard the Carpenter, yes? I am. I, I didn't realize my name was known so widely. I'm a friend of Martha's. She asked us to come and find you. Well, I'm very grateful for it. I just finished checking these piles when I turn around, I see a gang of slavering monsters looking to, to feast on my flesh. If you hadn't come when you did, I'd have been snipped into strips by now. We're just glad you're safe. I, I best go and give my regards to the landlady then, eh? Actually, she asked that if we found you, we should beg you make haste to repair the bridge to Eastpool. Of course. I, I said I'd take a look at it, but it, it clean slipped my mind. I'll head up there straight away. Ah, the trusses are still sturdy. It's just a matter of replacing the stringers and relining the deck. I'll have it done in no time. Thank you, Bernard. We were hoping to take the road to Eastpool ourselves. We're very grateful for your help. And sorry for asking this of you after what you've been through. I owe you my life. Fixing a bridge is the least I can do. Thank you, my lady. And you too, son. You're with Sid, ain't ya? Me and him will go way back. Not as far as Martha mine, but far enough. I see. Well, I best get cracking then. You go and let Martha know I'm all right, and she'll have her bridge back soon enough. We will. See, we're seeing it there. Even people that are sympathetic to the bearer's cause, somebody who knows who Sid is, doesn't immediately address Clive as a person addressing Jill instead because Jill doesn't have the tattoo mark because he may not know who he's dealing with and he can't be seen as having sympathies towards the bearers because you don't know who's going to be watching. 
It was only in the next scene that he felt comfortable enough addressing Clive directly, because, I mean, he's got to be careful himself. It was good, honest work. Ah, you're back. What happened? Did you find Bernard? We did. He's fine. And he'll have the bridge to Eastpool repaired soon. Oh, well, thank the Founder for that. It was lucky we found him when we did. The creatures out there are not to be trifled with. It's the Blight's fault. They had nothing to eat in the North, so they come down here hunting for food. Oh, he can't keep going out alone. I'll have to arrange a guard for him. But anyway, thank you. I don't have a lot to offer in return, but you're welcome to rest here until the repairs are finished. We'd be delighted. Can I get you a drink or anything while you wait? Flagon of Imperial Gold, perhaps? Tastes like swill, but it'll slake a thirst. No, thank you. I prefer the truth about why there are so few bearers around here. Yes, there were more of them when we were young. Far more. Is this the Empire's doing? Have they been sent away? Either to the Legions or Auriflam. Seems the miners at Drake's Head are having a hard time keeping up with demand of late, so the bearers make up the shortfall. Time was they used to dole out crystals like sugar plums even down here in the provinces, but not anymore. Nowadays, they'll jump at any excuse to confiscate our bearers so they can be put to work elsewhere. I always knew the Empire treated their branded like shit, but after seeing it with my own eyes, well... Ah, Thea! Congratulations on the new arrival. And you got a little laddie with you? It was a bearer. The boy I carried for nine long moons. A bloody bearer. Oh, you poor thing. You gave it to the constables then. Just left it at the garrison, I Let them deal with it. Couldn't wait to be rid of the blasted thing. Been wanting it gone since the moment I found out. Well, it's all dealt with now. So no harm done, eh? Mum, he weren't my brother, was he? No. But you'll have one soon enough. You just have to be patient. All right? All right. Unbelievable, isn't it? Bearers may have been looked down on back in Archduke Elwyn's day, but they were still human beings. Now they've fallen so far, a beggar wouldn't spit on them. Since you're not drinking, do me a favour and take that to the Abbey. There's a darkness at the heart of this world, and I'd have you see it. And we'll see it at an Abbey? Glademond Abbey, on the shore of Sorrowise Bay. The Abbot there is a friend. Tell him Martha sent you, and he'll show you what I mean. Understood. Now that's a really disturbing thing that we just witnessed, how a mother can immediately just disregard her child as a result of this child being born a bearer. But I think it also points out something a little bit odd there. Because I had assumed that, I mean it might still be the case the way genetics work out, but I had assumed that whether someone was born a bearer or not would be the result of like a, just a purely genetic influence. So your mother is a bearer, your father is a bearer, and you would end up being a bearer. Now, it's possible that it's just a kind of recessive gene 
and it can crop back up without uh, when you least expect it, you know? But it seems as though maybe it just kind of is random, because obviously she wasn't a bearer, or she would have uh, been found out. Her um, that Whoever she had the kid with would have been a bearer, or they would have found out, and obviously her older son wasn't a bearer either. So why did this one kid just sort of come out as a bearer? It kind of... It kind of points to maybe an external influence, sort of like how in Mass Effect you have the, what do they call them, the, those um, Element Zero people that can use magic, whatever, whatever the people in Mass Effect that can use magic was called. They weren't born with it, they were just sort of exposed to something when they were in the utero or something like that, and it change them to make them able to use the magic. And maybe there's something like that going on here. There's also something else that was said that is kind of telling into this world how the magic crystals, which are what average people use in order to use magic, are becoming more of a scarce resource. And magic is something that this world is very dependent on. You see people walking around with the magic crystals, somebody back there using it to cast ice on some fish. Seems to be something that the world relies on. I knew that children were tested, that a bearer's fate was decided at birth. And it seemed it was best for all concerned. I know, but for a child to be blamed, to be hated by its parents through no fault of its own. We knew nothing of what it meant to be born that way, did we? No. So it's kind of tragic that this world is so dependent on people that it looks so far down upon. And now that Clive and Jill are adults and they're seeing what the world is like, perhaps, well, Clive a little bit more so than, hey, you know what, even Jill, the people she was with treated her very poorly. They're seeing what the world is like from this other perspective, and it definitely sucks. Anyway, I'm going to bring this episode to a close. We'll pick up the next one when we reach the Abbey.